Alright guys, so welcome to another episode of MC Anime. We are currently on the 12th episode as of right now. And further ado, I'm MC Anime. We have fellow co-hosts. Hey everyone, it's Leah here. Thanks for tuning in. And we actually have a special topic today. Do you want to introduce it? Oh yeah. So today's topic that we're going to be going over is um, the best and worst anime genres that are out there. We talked about it a lot yesterday while going over the ones that we can kind of stand, kind of check out, and then the ones that absolutely are on our worst and best list. So I think it's going to be a fun conversation. Okay. So best and worst genres, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Top three. So yesterday when we, we were on the phone, we did mm-hmm. talk about um, just the differences that we had. Because we did have a few different yeah. ones that are best and our worst. But yeah. for the best ones, we, we finally landed on uh, Isekai, action mm-hmm. comedy, and fantasy. And for the, uh, for the worst ones, we had a Splice of Life, Harmon, um, Harem, and then Musical. And then we had like one that we debated on because it was on my worst list and on your best list, and yes. that was Mecha Animes. So we'll have a whole debate about <laughs> that a little bit later. <laughs> we did not agree on it even at the end of the call yesterday, but we could talk okay. about. Um, let's talk about our first, like uh, the top three that we have. Yeah, so, let's uh, do. Uh, let's focus on Isekai for for the best section. I love so, Isekai Animes. When we were discussing. You know, back and forth brainstorming. Isekai was basically one common thread on our favorite list. So, for me to start off, a what Isekai is of the genre is basically your transport to another world that's different from Earth, and from that world, there's different ways you gain access. Teleportation, reincarnation. Uh, you trapped in the, you trapped into a virtual reality. There's so magic transports you to this world to another world. There is so many different ways that you get transport, or you go to a different universe, except that's different from Earth, or even maybe a parallel dimension. Yeah, I mean, um, back in the day, I think the most popular way was kind of like through a portal yeah. or something, like um. Yeah. Like a similar way would be like with Inuyasha, so Kagome and the yeah. Well. Um, you had <laughs> Digimon. Inuyasha. Yeah, and so it's like you you had different ways of getting there that were all kind of yeah. magical. It was like a, a Narnia experience where you end up there, and then you also had the chance to also go back to your old world and back to your old life. And most of the time when you went yeah. back, nobody knew what the what you were talking about. Like, I don't know if you ever watched uh, the old Cartoon Network show, which was, like, their version of a of a mm-hmm. um, anime. It was called Code Lyoko. Did you ever hear of that one? I, I think I did, yeah. In brief details, yeah. I do. Yeah, that one, the whole basis was that it was a bunch of, like, either high school or middle school kids that were fighting, like, this overlord who only existed in the virtual world. So their friend was a coder and event like basically yeah, had to download them. One. Yeah, so and it's so oh, good cause it's like that's so because they go and then they come back and they do school like normal. And oh, I'm just dude, like, this early two thousands. Oh, yeah, that was early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's what I'm saying. All the older ones. Good, yeah, yeah. The newer ones now, you have to die. Uh, <laughs> you have to. <laughs> you have to die. It's unfortunate. Yeah. Sorry, oh, RIP. <laughs> but the old ones was just, you know, you get teleported somewhere, you you slip into something, you fall through some magical circle, and boom, you're there. But nowadays, mm-hmm. you got to get hit by, like, a truck or a van or, like, stabbed if you're in Shield Hero. And then, like, yay, you, know, you make it to the next world, unfortunately. I miss the old school way. I miss the magical portals. I love isekais. You can't go wrong. Yeah. It's just a great genre. Oh, yeah, it is. Because, you know, take for take for example Inuyasha. The, you know, classic 
uh, to early 2000 anime. Well, the reasoning how they get there to feudal Japan is not, it's basically time travel through a well. But mm-hmm. she's dragged down through the well being descendant of a former priestess, and that's how that's her connection to that world. And in Yasha can also use the well to get out from that world back to Earth modern day to feudal Japan. Mm-hmm. And, there, and there's some similarities where you can also see where objects traveled in time as well through the modern day. And you you see that aspect of them using it to some advantage in the story, but the main philosophy is is that that well is a special magical connection to the other world, and through that they were able to travel through it, and basically like a wormhole type of effect back in time, which is kind of cool. I loved it. Like, I loved watching it as a kid. I think everyone yeah. loved um, Adult Swim, and unfortunately, I think everyone has the like opening song. What a closing song mm. to get to watch it. Because it would just blare at 3 a.m. Because you would fall asleep trying to watch these shows. Oh, yeah. they, they play, like, the same six shows, and then they just restart it. So, I, yeah. I definitely have fond memories of that. Um, like, what's another... I mean, like one of the recent, I I would I would put this in isekai would be uh Doctor Stone, because that one's just about there was a weird petrification effect that happened in the Earth in modern day times, and then like I forgot what it was. It not was like does that transport back in time? Just it's five hundred no, years no. that took place. Yeah, no, they go forward yeah. a couple of thousand years. Yeah. Um, and then they just have to like they kind of have to start over civilization, but there's also still people there. So I yeah. like that one just because it's still it's a form of time travel. They just can't go back to the original time. They're just yeah. they're just there, which is a lot of isekais for the most part. I of think modern day. Time is that they never age from the time that that fast forward. No, they're they still were the same uh, age the time. Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting, and then. <laughs> The main character has literally counting the days to keep his sanity, so eventually he would break out. <laughs> That's weird. I yeah. I love that show. I I was like, <laughs> it. That's the only that is main character energy where they're just counting the days, and that's that's just something that you just have to know about them from the jump. That's how amazing they are. I love Senku. I was like, you know what? <laughs> Your oh hair for gosh. some reason is like you have like a leak for a hair. It's green at the top. Why does e the equals MC the square? That's the only thing I have to say. Jesus. Yeah, I, I love you? the genre. I think it's probably one of the more I think it's one of the ones that has like the best way to tell stories too, because yeah. it can kind of start you off with like this is the character as they are. This is like the type of person they are in modern day. And then they send them yeah. to someplace completely different with like no friends or support. And then you get to see them like use those skills and kind of mold themselves. And you get mm-hmm. to learn a whole set of characters. I love it. Most isekai yeah. can't do any wrong. And you know, even though uh, now isekai is like getting overused in a lot of different anime, they still have a unique connection to tell a story. And most isekai genre now, I think it's a sub-genre, I think this is now established to virtual reality or trapped in a video game. So... Um, they were, no, trapped in a video game like, is very not common. Really. No, it, I think common after... Now, you know, like before when isekai first appeared. Which is like the eighties or the seventies when the first Yeah, I feel was, like yeah. I feel like a sword art online. Yeah. You know, like there's there's usually a show that kind of makes it that like that's the iconic show for that yeah. specific type of setup. And I feel like um like yeah, like we could talk about Code Lyoko, but if you really want to talk about talk about people going to another world in a video game and getting stuck there, yeah. 
Sword Art Online is like the one that you know hands down. Well, um, yeah, and also Mortal Horizon came before Sao too. So true, true, and I mean there's a uh, there's Shield Hero yeah. as well, but like oh, yeah. at the end, yeah, like even though these shows definitely have all the same premise, I think there are just top ones uh, for whatever kind of like situational issue there is. Um, mm -hmm. And then once that's kind of done, anything that comes afterwards just kind of gets compared to it. Everyone's just like, yeah. uh, I mean, it's kind of like that other one though, right? So that's the only yeah. downfall when it comes to uh, isekais. It's just that if there is one very iconic one, anything else even similar to it, just kind of you you don't you don't see it you don't think about it kind of gets a little overcast but it, that's the competition. Um, oh yeah. What else? What else did we have on the list? Oh, yeah, action, action comedies. Comedy. Action comedies. Uh, as I said, I was like Gintama is a perfect example of this. Um, a show that has like really good fights. Um, a really good storyline and it's pretty quick with the like scene to scene transitions but yeah, it's yeah. also hilarious and really funny I like there's some animes where you're just like oh maybe that could kind of fit there but I wouldn't yeah. like I wouldn't put Naruto as an action comedy it has funny moments but that's more of like a shonen jump they, we, they're fighting like the whole premise is that people are mm -hmm. fighting definitely people are dying um, Gintama does have that, but they have more of like a crack, uh, oh, yeah. way of doing things and more spoof. So I, I lose it every time I watch Gintama and you watched a live action movie yeah. and you said that was hilarious. Yeah. And another one that is actually pretty hilarious is One Punch Man or One Punch oh, Man. For sure. And anyone that doesn't know what One Punch Man is. Is basically their version of hero comics, but with Saitama and training himself to so much 100 push ups, 100 sit ups, 100 squats, 10K, 6.2 miles running every single day. This is how he gains his training and effectively becomes the strongest person in the world. And in that aspect, as his title says, One Punch Man, he literally has to restrain himself when he uses it because of how much power it relies in One Punch. Yeah, I mean, like, I think for uh, One Punch Man, I think the greatest thing about it is that mm. he's just so broken as a character. Yeah, he, and it's like and the entire it right away. Dial of the superhero the genre. Everything <laughs> about it. Because in that show, you have a... It's literally like society... Yeah is built around having heroes to fight off these uh -huh. villains and then just a regular <laughs> salary man who was just like, I mean, I was applying for jobs, but I don't want to be weak anymore. And it's, it's just so good. His blank face and even the name of his punches, like super serious punch. <laughs> I'm just like, Oh, okay. It's not even a fancy name. It's just, <laughs> just punches. Just a serious yeah. Punch. I actually have a funny story. Um, I went to comic con and mm -hmm. I saw this poster. With Iron Fist and One Punch Man. I bought it because it was just Saitama versus Iron Fist. And I, I mean, literally I did an awesome. entire blog about it saying, hypothetically, what are these two characters will fight? What will be the impact? And by me doing that, I still have the same uh, art that I bought at the Comic Con convention. It was, it was pretty cool. Conventions are the best place to go to get yeah. artwork done of like cross universe stuff that you wouldn't expect. That's actually oh, yeah. pretty dope. Yeah. And, um, you know, Iron Fist really is, uh, doesn't have the advantage of a one punch man, but in his respective comic, <laughs> spirit, <laughs> he was part of the Defenders and you know, was defending the streets of New York of an ancient martial arts that uses chi. So you mm -hmm. have to say that if he collects enough chi, maybe he'd be something that can be considered of that genre. 
True. I, my only thing about it, though, is that yeah. when I think about Iron Fist, now I can only think about not the comics and like the feats he had in the comics, but the yeah. Netflix show. And like Danny <laughs> Rand and the Netflix show got beat up oh like every gosh. episode. And that man was living off the power of friendship. Like he was one of those rare superheroes in a superhero show who was like, help me, please. Like, I need, I need backup. Like guys, let's rally together. That's the only thing about the Netflix one that was just like, man, they did not, <laughs> they didn't even didn't give my boy a chance. Oh um, yeah. Outside of one punch man, like there's good old school ones. Like there's good classics, like a uh, loop in the yeah. third. Um, I like oh, yes. Detective, like that one said. Yeah. Third is hilarious. It's pretty old, and there's a lot of movies yeah. in different parts, so that's okay. And then <laughs> equally f- famous gentleman, the grandfather. And dudes out these robberies, he has a high profile treasure and steering out call sending out call, calling cards beforehand. <laughs> so he and also with Lupin the Third, there was a big anime infringement of the book called Lupin as well. Mm-hmm. They kind of took Arison Lupin name and made him like the the grand no his the grandfather of the book is it's really weird. It, I it can't got into remember. a lot of I uh, mean... copyright issues and as a result it had to change its name in several countries to avoid the copyright. But after it became public domain, it went back to loop in the thought. It's it's really weird. Um <laughs> can't even tap in on that one that I did not know um, yeah <laughs> yeah I didn't know that I mean because I Lupin the Third was one of those shows where it was like if you were if you had seen Gundam you probably saw Lupin at some point yeah. um, you probably were also like seeing a bit of like cow, like Cowboy Bebop's also like an action comedy yeah. like they have a lot of funny parts uh, other shows that have a similar vibe. You got what Samurai Champloo, that one. Oh yeah, like, Samurai Champloo and Cowboy Bebop have the same kind of like. It has one season, but it's hilarious and it's impactful. They hit a lot of yeah. notes, but they do it. They do it really, really well. And the comedy is like you're not expecting to laugh that hard, and you yeah. you're hoping your parents don't come down the hall and like, are you still up? That's that's exactly <laughs> what Tsunami and like Adult Swim was like. Yeah. Um, and then another one that we have is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I freaking love JoJo, dude. <laughs> I have so much JoJo merch. I love JoJo. The extra, uh, the characters just masculine all the way. Even the female characters with basically masculine qualities. Uh, it's all a man, of them are exaggerated. <laughs> <laughs> all of the exaggerated speeches and the interesting battle scenes and just the logic that it applies within the show and how it explains everything is it's just one of those shows you just you gotta watch it and also every season is a different arc. So you can actually watch certain shows out of order. And since they are standalone, they're a different story. The so just only, keep like that the in only mind. Ones, yeah, when I would say when you do start, um, yeah, everyone, one and two everyone, you want to watch back to back. Well, one and or that, two, I feel like you can just watch it whenever yeah. you want to. But if you want to yeah. get into the more, like the more recent and kind of better mm-hmm. storyline and kind of a bit more that you can relate to, definitely start with part three. And go yeah. forward, and then also JoJo is literally fo- like it's focused around um, the Joestar family. The whole basis of the yeah. show is that the Joestar family is cursed to deal with this one crappy adopted angry blonde man named Dio who just won't <laughs> give up in trying to murder them. So like for for like three or four seasons, you're just watching this man do whatever yeah. he wants, and 
it's amazing. It's very funny. They have uh these kind of like uh astral projected uh beings that are work on their behalf. Think of it as and like ghost Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah. So they're stands. They have like a special ability that's kind of related to that person's personality or special um you know yeah. special quirks about themselves and so they fight uh you're gonna laugh a lot and then you're going to immediately cry because you're having a good time and then they yeah. just zip zam zoom and take out one of your favorite characters it's a great and it's a great show and the newest season is coming out in december and the pleader uh ox that don't have a stand they were using the uh martial art technique harmon so that's mm-hmm. also something else from the hit didn't have basically pre-stand chapters. That's, that's also yeah, that's brings me the question. One, one and two, I think. Yeah, supernatural goes into a lot into fantasy as well. What do you think about fantasy? I like fantasy. I just think that you gotta make sure you're going with the right storyline because yeah. different fantasies can have different stuff. Like you have a lot of slice of life fantasy stuff. Where it's just kind of yeah. going to another world, um, or you just you just like get introduced to another world, and you're like, oh, this is kind of interesting. I've never seen yeah. this concept before, or it's just kind of whimsical. Some of them feel yeah. like a D and D campaign when you're watching them, which I think is <laughs> yeah. fun. And then um, some of them are just really like whimsical, and they're just very oh, yeah. calming and relaxing, and you just get to have fun. Nothing really oh, yeah. bad is going to happen. I love those ones. So. And, uh, a very really good example of fantasy is No Gain No Life. It really goes into the fantasy the fantasy Isn't that like part. Kind of isekai? It's kind of yeah, another world. It, it, it's isekai, and they hit the 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 two duos named Blink, the the daughter and sister duo that mm-hmm. basically are now the chess minds of the new world and try to regain what humanity has lost through. Uh, their territory and try to expand it, and each one represents a chess piece as well. So each species That's or each race true. has a perspective chess, and if you lose that, you basically losing your right to govern yourself. I think I it's really interesting. With the right to govern yourself, or do you die? I can't remember that, but that one has a really good. Yeah. Uh, so I think that one's what one season. Yeah. There's only one season for it. But, yo, Lordy, before you watch it, people, before you go and watch it, you're like, oh, they recommended it. Um, The brother and sister, like, sometimes when you're watching it, you're like, this is a little wild. Like, y'all kind of close. And they don't, I don't even, I think they do that step-sibling thing where they're yeah. like, we're step-siblings, but she's, she's so cute and small. But sometimes you be watching, you're like, Oh, don't nobody walk into the room. Oh, please, no one walk in at this yeah. time. Because they like any show that you're not expecting something wild to happen, someone always walks in immediately. They'll be having a perfectly normal conversation oh, yeah. about like ramen and how they cook their eggs. Oh, yeah. And then someone walks in and it's just itchy everywhere. And so. there's another one Soul mm-hmm. Eater. Ah, uh, really Soul Eater. They're going fantasy. Soul Eater is really big on fantasy. And the wild thing is that I haven't finished Soul Eater. Like, <laughs> I don't even feel bad. Like, I was watching. The issue is that I just, like, I was watching. I was like, there's a lot for me to keep up on. I might have to take notes. I'm not paying attention. And I just gotta when go people back. don't know about this, the title Soul Eater, you basically have to consume uh, for your, I think, for the weapon, 99 soul. You basically collect uh, 100 souls. Mm-hmm. One is 99 of just regular soul humans, but these are like dead souls, so like already after the fact, post war. Right. And then you had to collect one soul from a witch to level up, basically. you Once you do that, you reach a state where you, you are basically now mastering of a servant and master relationship, and the people transforming into weapons what is what serves the master what? under the servant. It really gets in... You, you really get a really interesting Uh-oh. array of characters. You also get one character that is just obsessing over symmetric. Oh, no. Symmetry. 
which is hilarious. And in doing so, he's also the uh, the son of death or the reaper. So as a result, he, you know, you know. Let's see. They take on missions, collect souls, and protect the city from the world's threats. Working together to become sounder in mind, body, and soul. That's a main theme that you also have to keep up with. Yes. <laughs> so. so it really signifies what it is about, and it's a really good storyline, in my opinion. What do you think? I mean, I'm definitely going to agree. I feel like some of the best ones always have the um the best storyline. <laughs> uh, I think it. I think it's just could be. I would say whenever people are making their list, maybe look. Yeah. You know, to make sure it's the right genre, not just the right genre, but the right storyline, so that way you can really get immersed yeah. in it. Um, but I think this one of those animes you could easily do it. Ooh, like, how about Howl's Moving Castle? Howl's Moving Castle, like anything Studio Ghibli wise, or Howl Miyazaki. <laughs> like yeah. I think, I think for everyone, even when you watch it for the first time, it gives that feeling yeah. of a. Uh, like nostalgia, like you're like, oh, I, I uh-huh. you, like you feel relaxed, you feel you feel warm, and everything feels really good. Um, yeah. And I think, and I, I like for Howl's Moving Castle, uh, the fact that you were kind of traveling along with this character, and you're just as lost as them, and you're catching up, and you're falling in love with what's going on. I think it's, a, I think it's just an amazing story. I love, I love it. And they're opening up a theme park in Japan next year. Uh, for Studio Ghibli, uh, Ghibli stuff that's going to include like House Castle and I love that like I'm excited about that if only I could go to Japan yeah and also with fantasy we get a lot of the whimsical magical element but you also have supernatural um, fantasy also can dive into a little bit of uh, there's also dark fantasy like Bazook it's not just the regular fa- it's like it's dark fantasy so it gets into more serious matters as well so there's different types and different ways you can integrate in the story with fantasy that's why I really like it mm-hmm. yeah um, all these different stories that involve fantasy like even in Yasha it's fantasy so you can even bring that back up and say oh it's fantasy because of this and this and this well, we even talked this. about that because yeah. we were saying yeah. that uh, when we were making the list yesterday, we were saying between um, fantasy and isekai, if maybe we should just yeah. take one of them out because they're like a lot of times they just have a lot of similar themes outside of but someone even getting if they have similar there. themes, there's yeah. so much fantasy that's not isekai that you have to include. That's very true. That is very true. Um. And a lot of them have very complete storylines that I actually oh, like yeah. because they're not, I don't think that they're pulling in too many directions. I do think that sometimes with isekais, uh, yeah. when like they have they have the whole concept of their original world or the old world, and then this new place, them jumping in between, like yeah. especially in flashbacks and stuff. And I'm just like, just get on the dragon, man. Like, yeah. you can't go home. Just go ride that dragon. But and in, even uh. In- the Adventures of Catch Them All Pokemon is the best, one of the good fantasy elements you, that it tells in its world, too. I think, well, when it comes to shows like that, like, uh, yeah. there's also, like, Ancient Magnus Bride. Yeah. For sh- those shows, they they have, like, a modern kind of feel, like, they kind of tie it yeah. in that modern way, but then they also have a very um, magical <laughs> element to them. Yeah. It's kind of like a, like, Full Metal Alchemist. Like, you're seeing mm-hmm. cars drive by and people have bakeries and all of that but at the same time oh, yeah. they're also making swords out of like yeah. you know dust and whatnot and fighting humunculus and so i think in regards to if i had to pick between the two whether yeah. i would want to watch an isekai or a fantasy i think it might depend on mood but fantasy yeah. might win out more often than yeah. not because it's just it's just so much fun it's just such a good time and speaking about uh fantasy bringing happiness how about musical Going to the worst category. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> we freaking talked about this yesterday. And I like, 
the thing is, is that I have a lot of girlfriends who love musical animes. Um, they think they're, uh, they're, they're just the best thing in the world. I have some that I really, I do like. Yeah. Like, I like Zombieland Saga, which I think is hilarious because it's just like, uh-huh. it's zombies that they made into like an idol singing group. And I'm like, these poor girls, they just found out they're dead and they have a full schedule. <laughs> But then you have other ones, like, you know, you have Given, you have your Lion oh, Apo yeah. that you just saw. Um, what What's the Love, other one? Live School Idol Project. <laughs> uh, uh, what is it? Something on Tuesday. Let's Brain's see. Brain's not working. Um, but you have quite a few that are... Oh, yeah. That, like, and there's, if you go in the actual tab for, like, music or musical anime, yeah. there's, there's a good bit that you're like, oh, I didn't realize that there were this many. Um, like, there's, like, what, K-On! in that one musical? Oh, yeah, K-On! is really like, interesting that's for like, that. That's, like, the heavy hitter of them. Yeah. Not get Which me wrong, like, I like musical, and how musical drives the soul, you know, drives the beat, you dance to the beats and the music, and how it integrates culture, but, like, culture and animes already extinguished so the music aspect is like maybe too much culture in some areas because i know some music tend to go be like a lot oh here's one Uh, aggressive aggressive we (laughs) rest oh that one i love i love uh, yo anyone who's ever worked in the office <laughs> yeah, it's just heavy. That's one of the few that I'm like the Zombieland saga. Uh, I liked Carol and Tuesday. I thought that one was kind of cute and like interesting. But yeah, and then Agrisuko, I was just like, yes, yeah, heavy metal, <laughs> like a cute like little Animal Crossing main character in world, and everyone looks so adorable. And then when um, she is like pissed off and off work. Or she's like overloaded. She's like, let me just go to the bathroom star real quick. Do, 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 do. And it just hits the vocals. I love that show. <laughs> I love that show so much. I'm like, oh, my spirit animal for real. <laughs> so good. Oh, oh my God. It's just, you know, and the thing with her is whether it's facing Mr. Stomach remarks from her boss or being pressured by co- condescending co workers, stress is just another part of the job. Despite being one of the most diligent workers, her honesty often leaves to be exploited by her colleagues. However, situation hits the limit, brings forth the unique brand of letting off steam, aggressive death metal karaoke. It's such, Can't a, go it's wrong. such a and I think it's one of like I think for this one, um, and even the other ones that we yeah. like, even the other worst category like anime yeah. genres. There are like certain shows that shine through because they're just really unique in their concept. And this is yeah. one of them. Like, I think we're really used to seeing bands and people having like bass guitars and microphones and a drum set and matching outfits. And then, you know, they grow through their music. But for her, oh, yeah. like she just kind of she expresses herself, but the the type of music never changes. Uh, mm. it's always like the same like she goes in on the same track every time just goes to karaoke plays the same song but she just says different words and I think that's what makes oh, it yeah. even funnier I love it yeah. I watch it all it's a really good one um, that brings us to uh, well then also with Given another thing with Given is that we actually followed the band aspect and they actually form an all boys band, and mm-hmm. they actually take the person who's new to the band singing and trying to learn the bass and guitar. And they're shocked by how well they he sings, and how well he captures the voice he puts inside the song itself. So when he's writing the song. He puts so much energy into it, and as a result, it creates an atmosphere of like the mu- the the notes hitting you personally. You resonate what he's feeling. So, yeah, like given, I know Given's really good. Yeah. Um, I think just for me, because like 
I love theater. I'm a theater nerd. And, like, I love <laughs> musicals. But, like, I think that's my extent of that. Yeah. Like, I, I'm like, oh, if it's real people or, like, a Disney movie or something, I'm like, yeah, this makes sense. But when it, for some reason, when it gets to anime, I'm just like, I can't do it. I just, I can't sit here for a concert with, like, like it's too far. That's my line in the sand. That's it. I, I'm just like, Speaking I will. Speaking of musical. Uh, high school musical comes to mind, and with high school, you get to the school setting, and then you get the spice of life. What do you think about that? The school like setting spice... and spice of life playing so much. Look, spice of life animes. I think, I think I like spice of life more as a manga and manga yeah. form than I would probably as an anime because in the anime. Like, I'm trying to do also escapism, so I want to, that's why I mm-hmm. like fantasy, and that's why I like isekai, you know, that's why I like my action comedy, but if it's like, if I'm just watching you do the exact same thing that I do, and go through the exact <laughs> same problems I do, and nothing cool is coming out of this, I get so angry, like, I'm just like, why well, didn't go anywhere, it's like, if you got off work, but you didn't leave the office, like, that's how it feels yeah. to me, so growing up in high school, I was like, it's interesting seeing other, like, a different way that people oh. um, in other countries go to high school. That I thought that was cool. But that's as far what as it went. What you spent your high school as Bob Psycho 100? But that's different. That's not Slice of Life, though. That was, like, that that's still not fantasy. Oh, uh, oh, no. It's in the he fantasy, in the- <laughs> but it is Slice of Life. <laughs> Look at the you just see them going out. No, they go by Spice of Life is literally day-by-day life. That's I how don't they think live. That a, if that, no. if the issue with that is that if you did that, you would also have to be like, yeah, like my hero academia. <laughs> I'd be like, that's not slice of life. These children have horns. Like in my mind, I just, I just, I don't know. Maybe you might be right, but when I think of slice of life, I think maybe okay. as the wildest that I think of in slice yeah. of life is like fruit basket. And yeah, like, something that's that such as a story or movie that shows an ordinary life, like the story is shows presents a slice of life in a small witness western town, or a realistic representation of everyday experience in a movie, play, or book. And you think Mom like, Psycho was on this list? I would Mom, say like, okay, Mom Psycho, Psycho follows like, the hey. school compound, and in doing so. It deteriorates their basic day to day life. They blow up the school almost every episode, though. <laughs> like, yes, I, but I, I agree of life is them following that setting. I don't know. I think, them. I think that can be a slippery slope only in the sense that yeah. any show that has any type of like fantasy element to yeah. it. Or like otherworldly or superhero element. Yeah. Um. You w- could also put in this category just for the fact that it is their everyday life, and that's how we're being introduced to them. But if it's it's usually more simple. It's, it's more um, a simplistic way of life. The usual that we see in all life, and Mob Psycho exhibits that ex- abilities aside. They goes. follow the, the school setting more so than other fancy with schools in it. This also brings in the fact of Clown Lab, which is a really good spice of life, too. Conrad? Clown Lab. Clown Ad. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I was like, oh. Yeah, I can see. Mm-hmm. I will, I will. You know. Uh, let's see. Tamiya Uzaki. A delinquent who finds a life dull and believes he'll never submit to anything. His friend Yaoi, he skips school, plans to waste his high school days away. One day, while talking to school, Emily passes a young girl, muttering quietly to herself without warning. She explains, explains, I'm Palm, a popular Japanese food, catches his attention to discover her name is Nashika, and she explains, ex- Explains things that she likes in order to motivate. Claims that they're now friends, but walks away passing the day as oh. nothing has happened. So it's basically a clash of opposites meeting each other and each one of them giving something that they don't already have to each other. 
Yeah, but it's also really sad, y'all. Like, yeah, it's it, life it and life. Up there in the like, sad it's, department. It's, it's <laughs> one of the saddest animes out there. And it's a, like a two-parter. <laughs> oh, my God. You're reading it like it's like, you know, like if you have some free time, friends, it's like, mm-hmm, get some tissues. <laughs> gonna be a long ride like <laughs> you're you're absolutely right there is a bit of slice of life in there i'm gonna put it in the category but you will cry yeah you, you will absolutely cry oh like, my um, gosh yeah there, uh. i think there there are a lot of like good ones uh i don't know if oh, you've yeah. seen uh Hori Mia, oh which is like a oh, romantic my. comedy that one's pretty good and i i think the best thing about slice of life is that I don't know. I would say for people dis- who, yeah. Hmm? How about the dis- that, uh, disastrous life of Psyche K? Oh, that show is just great. That, that, <laughs> that's one that's like they have it in Slice of Life, which it, it is. It is a slice of life, but I would definitely say it's also a comedy Fantasy. more than yeah. anything. Like you yeah. could definitely have a watch party with like have Gintama going and then just put on Akai <laughs> and no one would no it would you would keep the vibe going all night. It would be a good time. It'd just be laughs and, and good times. Yeah. No, that one that one's actually really good. The way he's sick yeah. of everybody. And I mean you also and like I like I think a good a good middle ground I would say for me is sports animes. Like I like yeah. sports animes. Um like I like Haiku. Um, I like Kuroko No Basket. Um, I like Free. I think those are all like the really good ones. Um, Prince of Tennis, yeah. all of that. But they are slice of life. Like nothing supernatural is happening. They just replay stuff like three times when yeah. someone makes a really good move. But it's still oh, like yeah. high school kids doing high school kids stuff. And then you're just kind of following them through their journey. So if if I did pick yeah. slice of life, it would probably be a sports anime, but outside yeah. of that. I don't know. Maybe like I would do Saki K. I would do maybe Fruit Basket. And, and as uh, disastrous life of K is sick of the people around him. Another often thing is uh, it's the maybe have an entire group of people around you all the same gender and you're the opposite gender. They fail in genre. What do you think like, about? This is like proof that we have like absolutely turned away from God's life. Like harem <laughs> animes is just I don't know I don't know how we got here or where the train's gonna stop. <laughs> but like it's just Penny Simpson City. And I just I hate the genre so much. I don't care how many like great shows are harem anime shows. Like yeah. if if I could get rid of the category in general. I probably would. <laughs> and like that makes me sad because like I I would look at it yeah. as like there's a lot of shows where you have like a female protagonist or a male protagonist and for some reason oh, yeah. everyone's falling in love with them. And they're doing yep. nothing. Like if there was an energy level, like if Goku was like, Give me all your energy, they are giving nothing. Because they are <laughs> yeah. just going up to school, trying to pass a math test and go home. And everyone's oh, yeah. just like, Will you pretend? To be my boyfriend, and they're like, I mean, I don't really want to, but I, I guess I feel bad, stranger. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, we're in a, we're a couple now. Oh my! Thinking God. of that of the school setting, a famous example is high school DXD. We talked about this. That one is <laughs> a good show, but it's still in the harem category. <laughs> it's in the harem, but, but man, does it get really extreme with it? And if anyone that doesn't know. Uh, high school at DXD is basically uh, the household of let's see. Oh yeah, basically well, the well, wait, vam- well, before you demons. explain it, before yeah. you explain it, it well, in the in the category of harem, if people aren't understanding, it is definitely one protagonist it's, who is of yeah. one gender, and then they normally have yeah. anywhere from four plus um, individuals of the opposite sex who is just like their posse that either yeah. starts to fall in love with them and then just decides to be their friend, but you just watch them get into all of these like unfortunate romantic flip-ups until they like end up being with the one person in the group that they're like, 
I love them. They love me. We're going to be together forever. And then the other ones are just, I don't know. They are, they're just happy to be there. But now, but now you can go. Just in case people are like, what the heck are they yeah. yelling about? Hair and animes. <laughs> and with uh, high school DXD, uh, we have the main tag Nagonus, is basically gets saved by Vias Glimmerly, and she is in the Glimmerly uh, household. That basically, if you do a Sylvan Demon pack with her, she saves the main character, and then the main character gets incorporated to the Glimmer, Glimmer, the Glimmer, the Glimmer household, and each one represents a specific chess piece. And the main character is actually a pawn, and but he's very important for because the, the pawn can actually become any chess piece if it gets on the other side of the board. So he can be queen, rook. So they can actually inherit, give him more power in a standalone form. So it's kind of interesting in that aspect, but it's it's very borderline uh, etchy, and etchy is another one that's like super heavy fan service, mostly just into Windows kind of thing. Yeah. Well, we we did have uh, yeah. like etchy like fan service animes that was almost gonna yeah. go on the list but since yeah. harem animes also really encompass that it's really popular in harem animes to have the whole like main yeah. guy trips in the yeah. hallway or gets bumped falls and grabs the girl's chest or lands on um, like underneath her skirt yeah. it's always like he the person gets put in a really unfortunate situation <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I mean, just <laughs> close the entire time like they're literally just trying to just get through the day, oh. and no one is allowing it. Like, there's all. another one. Uh, another one that's like really interesting for me. Wise is familiar as zero. This is a very interesting because it's actually he's a familiar summon to the another world, and as being someone, he has access to special abilities to control machinery of the human world. So human machinery that came to the world, he can now possess and actually use it as ancient magic. Is that what they call it? It's really mm. just machinery. It's kind of interesting. And they refer to it as the uh, gray dragon as an airplane. It's really hilarious. Honestly, like there are quite a few. Yeah. Like, um, I'm trying to think. Uh, it's an old school one. Oh, uh, Tenchi Muyo, I think it's called. Mm. It's this oh, yeah. old school like anime manga. They have different like off yeah. branches of it, but that one's also like that one. I think it's like, in my personal opinion, yeah. the the textbook of oh, when yeah. when harems get too out of control. So it's just basically about a guy. And he's on this ship, and I believe the women are like also battleships on the ship that he's yeah. in. And of course, they all fall in love with him, and he ends up like marrying some, and then like some of them are related and are in love with him. And it's it's literally like as if you're watching yeah. a reality TV show, yep. and you're trying to just keep up. And while mm-hmm. I do get the concept, I get why they're loved, and people like the messiness of them, and like yeah. that that tension of like, oh my god, is my favorite character going to end up with their person? Like, you're rooting for them, you're trying to ship yeah. people. I still hate it. Like, because <laughs> nothing is going on. Like, they, those shows have the most filler out of any anime genre. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, slice of life animes you think have a lot of, like, filler, because it's just like, they're, oh, it's not only it's, filler, it's everything to, like, happening yeah. day to day is not filler, because it's their life. Yeah, so. and I mean, like, there's there's episodes that, like, have to be in a slice of life anime, like the going to the beach one or yeah. the school festival. Like, those things are normal. But in freaking yeah. harem ones, it's like they always have to have, like, going to, uh, yeah. like, a spa, uh, like, yeah. uh, like an onsen or whatever. And they, they, they yeah. have to have that where they have peeking going on. There's always confession scenes. But they, it just feels <laughs> like so much filler. Because you're just watching a show yeah. about a guy figuring out 
<laughs> how's he gonna get laid? But he doesn't like he's not interested yeah. half the time either. It's just a mess. It's absolutely oh, yeah. a mess. And what's another mess is our in between honorable mention mecca genre. Uh, we agree to disagree on this because I, <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I hate mecha animes. Like that, I have very few that I would be like. I'll allow it, but the other ones, like, we can fight in the streets about them. I don't watch Gundam. <laughs> I refuse to watch Gundam. I don't get it. I feel like every season is, like, Power Rangers where I'm just like, what's the difference? Are there new just characters? Just watch Ultron. I don't know. Ultron is a lot better. O- Ultraman is a lot better. Okay, I did watch Ultron. I liked Ultron. And I think I liked Ultron more because I liked the characters yeah. more than what I liked yeah. with Gundam. So that's the, that's the, that's what I will yeah. say is different. I didn't like Voltron. At least with Ultron, we also get the the kaiju's as well. The big alien creatures coming that the Ultron fights. So that's true. Monsters like King Kong and Godzilla. You know, Ultraman is in that similar field, even though King Kong is actually older than Ultraman. But that's a different story for a different day. Um. But it really goes to show you that there's different types. It's usually like they're facing these creatures and they go into these, you know, suits or big machinery that's piloted by usually like two pilots and one's doing different things. And as a result, they usually go in pairs. And it's just also mentioned in military occupations as well. And doing so. They have to you that's a lot of times wars going on because of this. It for sure. I mean uh yeah. Pacific Rim is like a great example oh, of that yeah. concept of like them fighting kaiju monsters and yeah. you having the pilot together, you being synced yeah. up to the machine. Um I will say that I think there is a key difference when it comes to mecha um animes yeah. and manga though, where there's there's some where the user is like hooked up and they feel everything that's happening to the machine, like their nervous system or whatever is hooked up with it. And then there's other ones where they're just getting knocked around, but the pilot area, if that blows up, then they die. But like if they break a leg or something on the robot, they're not going to start screaming out in pain. They also like Geos too. The Lelouch, the the Rebellion, that was pretty good. That's all fought with, that's also Mecha as well. Which one is it? Eos, Lelouch Rebellion. Uh, nope, nope. Never seen that one. Britannia Empire takes over the. Uh, he uses Geos to absolute obedience and all that stuff. It's a revenge story. Back to the father who was is- isolated from the the empire. Take, you know what? Take my silence as an absolute no. <laughs> I was like, ooh, something's gonna click, but it's it's not. If I wake up and like at like ten yeah. tonight at eleven, I'll I'll text you and be like, oh, well, that's what you mean. It'll be too late, but just know yeah. I figured it out. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I no, well, I mean, I there are some yeah. really good ones. I mean, I know you could probably recommend more than I can. I've only seen a few. Like one that yeah. I liked was a. Like an older one called Gun X Sword. Oh, yeah. And that's pretty good. Yeah, I like that one. I like the story for that one. I thought oh, it was yeah. really good. Um, but if if I was like asked if I wanted to watch a mecha anime, the answer is probably no. Also, I don't like the scenes when they talk to their robots. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like. How about this? I'll, like, make, I'll force like you to watch different. Gundam and you'll have a greater appreciation for the genre. How about that? Okay. Like, give me one of the Gundams <laughs> to watch. I know there's like 27 or something. Yeah, I know. Like, you and, my, you and my brother, like, he used to get so mad at me when I was younger, because I'd just be like, are you watching the same? Well, I've never watched like, Gundam. <laughs> I, I, I never watched Gundam. I think it's like too much to get involved. I don't want like, something that's like 20 stories long. And I know that they're really, in, like, they're really good yeah. and, um, but I mean, like a yeah, like a what is it? Uh, what's the one with Shinji where he's crying all the time? 
Neon Genesis. Like Neon Genesis um, is, yes. I think that's the pinnacle of like mecha anime. That's where you, like yeah. the crimp of the crop. If you want to be like philosophical, drink a cup of coffee, yeah. look at people sideways. Um, uh, Neon Genesis is great for that. I like Gurren Lagan. I love Gurren oh, Lagan. Yeah, that's good. That's really oh, good. Cried, cried like a baby. <laughs> that was so old. I'm not going to spoil it for anyone, but basically, Gurren Lagan yeah. is about, um, it's like a version of Earth where we yep. destroy the top. There's a bunch of, like you said, like kaiju monsters walking around. And unless you have a machine or something, like you have to have your own battle, yeah. suit, um, your own mecha to fight other mechas or any monsters. And um, it's between two brothers who lived underground with the rest of the humans in their little village area. And then they come to the top and the story of them, yeah. the story of their journey. Oh, oh, the tears, I can feel it. <laughs> right oh my God. the universe, the drill that goes into the cosmos. Oh my oh God. My <laughs> I punched my brother right in the face after watching it. I was like, drip to the future. He was like, what is wrong with you? God, get some help. <laughs> get it together. So this wraps up all of the discussion of what we thought was as a collective, both of us, best yes. worst anime and in between. And best was Isekai action comedy. And then fantasy as well. Uh mm. worst was Spice of Life hand musical. And then in between, since we couldn't decide, was Mecca as an honorable mention. But there's also many other genres. Anime and and probably another podcast, we will try to cover maybe obscure genres and try to explain those to the audience. What do you think about that? I'm completely up for that. So there's a lot to navigate. Yeah. So kind of having like a breakdown of what each one is and yeah. if it might spark your interest, it will definitely save you some time so you don't end up watching a show that yeah. might turn you off from anime when there's a lot of oh, great, yeah. great creations out there. With that, that wraps up the uh, 12th episode of MC Anime episode. Podcast. Now, do you have anything to say in like, closing arguments? Um, one thing I have to say is that the beauty of anime is that we can all have different opinions and different loves. Uh, so oh, yeah. find the one that you cater to. If we had one of your favorites in our worst category list, or you hate me because I don't like Mecca, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. I'll take it. Um, but definitely, like, go out there and watch different shows. Yeah. You can always post on the Facebook page as well underneath the episode any of your favorite uh, genres that we didn't get to. And we'll definitely be able to hit on them in our next episodes when we talk about them more. And, uh, me, you know, even though co host you. She was able to bring this to light and make this a interesting topic. I feel like there's so much more. Different shows mean different interests. Go for what you're interested in. And if there's a particular genre you really like or the particular genre you just don't understand or can't stand at all, we all get it. And at the end of the day, we all who we are and what we watch it picks from what we like. So with that, that's the closing of this episode. I thank you for listening. I'm sorry we couldn't agree on Mecca, but I'm going to watch in 20 seasons of Gundam and make up for it. <laughs> thank right, you guys, guys for listening. <laughs> so we'll talk to you next episode. <laughs>